baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, holy orders, matrimony, reconciliation, and anointing of the sick. The Catholic Church teaches that there are seven sacraments, but lots of non-Catholic Christians who say they follow the Bible object to the Catholic teaching and practice of the sacraments. Catholics, too, can be confused. Are the sacraments biblical? If so, how? Yes, the sacraments are biblical. It may be useful to back up and ask, why do we have the pages of a Bible with its Old and New Testaments? Are we saved by words on biblical pages? Or are we saved by the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, to whom all the words on biblical pages direct us? The Bible communicates the mystery of Christ, the Word made flesh. Jesus Christ is the end of the law. He suffered, died, and rose again in fulfillment of the Scriptures. What was foreshadowed in the old is made manifest in the new. For Christ's Spirit gives new life in grace. Both the Old and the New Testaments are given by our one good God so that His people in salvation history may live their life in accordance with His will. Sacraments are those sacred signs from God to direct our life to Him. And they can be understood in terms of biblical law and the divine plan of grace. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches that God gives us law to instruct us and grace to assist us. Among the different kinds of law, there's a privileged place for revealed divine law. The old law, what we find in the Old Testament, has different kinds of precepts or commands. Moral precepts, ceremonial precepts, and judicial precepts. The ceremonial precepts are determinations of moral precepts, and they directed God's people in the Old Testament to worship Him. These ceremonial precepts included sacrifices, sacraments, sacred things, and observances. As for the sacraments of the Old Law, we can read in the Old Testament about such things as circumcision, the Passover banquet, and various rites of purification. But the Lord promises through the prophet Jeremiah, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. The Lord goes on later to say, I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts. Does that mean that there are no more external observances such as sacraments? The new law, St. Thomas teaches, is the law of the New Testament, and it is written on the heart. The new law is chiefly the grace of the Holy Spirit, which is given to those who believe in Christ. St. Thomas is adamant about the new law as grace. He says that even the letter of the gospel would kill, unless there were present interiorly the healing grace of faith. Grace is far more important than the words on a page of the Bible. Only secondarily, or in second place, does the new law consist in certain external matters. Grace flows from the incarnate word through certain external sensible objects, just as it was fitting that the incarnate word could be touched and heard in human form during his earthly ministry. Christ, in fact, instituted the sacraments to give grace to unite people across various lands and times to be in him. These sacraments are instruments that convey the life-giving power found in Christ's sacred humanity, pierced on the cross once and for all. From his pierced side poured out blood and water, symbolizing our sacramental life in the church that comes from his passion. The church's sacraments were anticipated in the Old Testament, which looks in faith toward the coming Messiah. Take the first sacrament, baptism, as an example. In the third chapter of his first letter, St. Peter directs our attention to Noah's Ark in terms of baptism. Eight persons then were saved through water, and that prefigures baptism that saves us now. Circumcision given to Abraham and boys eight days old, also in a way prefigured baptism. Jesus Christ himself, who was circumcised on the eighth day, was baptized by John the Baptist. Christ wanted to baptize us in the Spirit, a new circumcision of the heart for both males and females. 
consider the last words of our Lord in Matthew's account of the gospel. After rising from the dead and before his ascension, Jesus says to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Christ's parting words to us are sacramental, and the disciples acted on them in the life of grace. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 6, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. All the church's sacraments were instituted by Jesus Christ himself for the needs of our salvation. But someone may ask, what about confirmation? Or what about the anointing of the sick? Did Christ confirm? Did he anoint? St. Thomas says that Christ promised confirmation through the sending of the Holy Spirit. And we read that by Christ's institution, the apostles healed the sick by anointing them with oil. All the sacraments come from the Lord himself. And in different ways, the Bible gives witness to all of them. In conclusion, in exploring the question, are the sacraments biblical? We can see that the Bible points us to Christ and those sacraments in which we meet him during our lives on earth. Through the sacraments, the words of love, life, and mercy that we read in the Bible are fulfilled in particular actions in our lives, here and now, in heaven, we will not be reading the Bible, nor will we be receiving the sacraments. But now is the time to live the fullness of grace through the sacraments instituted by Jesus Christ, described in the Bible, and ministered in the church for our everlasting salvation. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to like and share with your friends, because it matters what you think. <laughs>